QuickBooks Online 2023. Receive payment transaction and form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser, incognito window, and then in the search engine, search for QuickBooks Online test drive. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're using the sample company to look at the difference between the the accounting view, the view that Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. If you want to toggle back and forth between the two views, you can do so by selecting the cog up top and the switching of the views down below. Opening up some tabs up top to put reports in like we do every time, right click in the tab, duplicate in that tab. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking. We're gonna go on down to the reports on the left hand side. Open up the balance sheet as we do every time. If you're in the business view, by the way, the reports are in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side. We're then gonna go to the tab to the right, open up the reports again. This time the other favorite, that being the profit and loss, the P&L that actually has activity in it. If I change the range, which we'll do now, closing up the burger, changing the range from 010123 tab, 123 tab, run it to refresh it. There's the activity we have thus far, tab it to the middle, back to the balance sheet, closing the booger, changing the range in from 010123 to 123123, run it to refresh it. That's the setup process we do every time. Last time we entered an invoice recording a sale. Now we're gonna go to the receive payment for it. So let's go to the tab to the left. Just remember the process. If I hit the drop down up top, when we're uh, receiving or when we have the revenue cycle on the customer cycle, a couple different ways that might happen. The simplest way would be if you just got paid by like a YouTube or a platform, you wait till it clears the bank and use a deposit form, possibly here, possibly with a register, possibly with bank feeds. Uh, that would be the easiest thing to do in that type of industry. If you're in an industry, however, where you have a, ch a cash register, you're typically gonna wanna use the sales receipt form when you make the payment or receive the payments and make the sale and then record the deposit of the sales that you have made and then if you're in an accrual system, which often would happen in a situation like you're an accounting firm or you are a, a lawyer or a, 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 some, a landscaper, then you have to do the work first and invoice. If you invoice, you have the added difficulty, of course, of tracking the payments to make sure that you can collect on them. That's what we're doing now. Last time we entered the payment, now we're gonna collect on it. So that means that from a financial standpoint, if I go into the accounts receivable, it's in accounts receivable. So there, these amounts are in accounts receivable. Now we're trying to collect on them. How do we do that? We could run other reports showing the accounts receivable broken out by customer. And then in practice, we'll typically gonna go to the tab to the left and go into the sales area. And this would be our customer center, you can call it. And we could go into the customers and close up the hand boogie. If you're in the business view, by the way, that would be in the skip paid and paid area and then in the customers. So that's where we are at in the business view. And then we can search for those customers with our line items up top, possibly those that have open invoices. 
that we need to be collecting on. So there we have our list of items there. I can hit the drop down here. I can send a reminder if I so choose. We can create statements because you'll note that now these in, these people have multiple uh, multiple items that are open open. So if we're collecting the receivables, we might try to set up a system where we create statements every once in a while, every month or something like that. We might try to automate the statements, which will not only send just the invoice, but send kind of a recap of the outstanding invoices that are due at any given point in time. So we can send them a reminder. We can send statements out for our, uh, for our customers to remind them to pay us. And then at some point we of course would hope that we're going to receive the payment, which is what we're going to imagine happens at that. This time we could go from right here to the receive payment button, which if I was to do that, if I open that up, it's going to go to a receive payment form already selecting the customer. And then the two invoices are down below that are related to this customer. I'm going to close that out without recording it. We'll go into it again shortly. I'm going to hit the uh, hamburger over here. We can also go into the sales tab and look at the, the all sales transactions. This is another way that you might track your receivables. And then we're going to look for the open invoices this way. This way we're looking at all the open invoices, not just the ones, you know, by customer. If you're in the business view, by the way, it's a little bit different location. It's in the bookkeeping. And then within the bookkeeping, you got the transactions up top and then you've got your sales transactions. There's where it's located in the business view. So that's those are the ways that you can get in there then we can we can sort all these items we could sort the transactions this way we can go to invoices which is quite common and then open invoices what is what we're often sorting for when we receive a payment then we can apply it out to the invoice so we could do we could do it this way with the receive payment but let's do it this way let's imagine we received a payment i'm going to hit the plus button and then I'm, we, we had an invoice. Now we're going to go to the receive payment. Now, just as a side note, you might think, hey, how does the bank feed fit into this situation if you have the bank feeds on? If you have the bank feeds and you have to invoice somebody, there's no cash related to the invoice. You've got to track the accounts receivable, which means even if using bank feeds, you've got to, you've got to see where the bank feeds are going to fit in the system. Now, you might say, well, you could kind of match the bank feed deposit that's going to happen to the invoice uh, and we'll talk more about that in an, another course or section with the bank feeds or you could receive the payment and then try to attach it to the receive payment or most likely if you're invoicing you're going to invoice you're going to receive the payment and then we'll put it into undeposited funds we'll talk about shortly and then we'll make the deposit and then you're gonna use the bank feed to check, double check on the deposit, which is basically means you're just gonna use it as part of your bank reconciliation process. Okay, so let's go into the receive payment and we can type in up top Anderson, Anderson Guitars. So if we do that, we get our invoices down below. So let's tap through it before I get ahead of myself though. The receive payment means that the accounts receivable is going down, basically. The customers have paid us, therefore the receivable is decreasing. Let's make the date up. I'm gonna hit the plus button here and bring it up to 18. And then the payment method, this is kind of for internal use payment methods. So we might get a check. We might have a credit card. If you wanted to add something like an electronic transfer or something like that, you can add a, a payment selection up top. I'm going to put cash for the purposes of our practice problem, even though it's unlikely we'd have such a large dollar amount in cash because I want to use it to explain this next item, which is where are we going to deposit this to? We're receiving a payment. That payment could be in the form of multi, you know, we could get a credit card. We could get cash. We could get a check. So where do we want to put it to? We could say, normally we would say, well, it's going to go into the, the cash, the checking account here. However, oftentimes you might uh, have an, another account that you want to put it into like an undeposited funds, a clearing type of account. And the reason for that would be, for example, if you received multiple payments for many different sales that you had and they were all cash payments, then if you deposit them directly into the checking account, then they're going to they're going to show up in the checking account as multiple line items. 
However, if you group all those payments together, when you physically go to the bank, it's going to be in the bank as one group sum amount. And therefore you can have this reconciliation problem. It might be easier to see that if you go over to our flowchart. We created an invoice here. Now we're going to go into the receive payment. So within the receive payment, we could deposit it directly into the bank account at this point in time. However, oftentimes you might want to put it into an, a clearing account, undeposited funds, and then make the deposit. Now with this receive payment, more and more, it's becoming likely that you might receive the payments that are, are going to be deposited directly in the checking account if you have like electronic transfers and you might more easily be able to deposit it directly into the checking account here without a problem. Where the problem arises is when you have multiple payments that are cash payments or the same thing happens with credit card payments. And then when you, when you deposit the money physically into the bank, not into your QuickBooks, but in physically to the bank, you're going to group those deposits together as cash deposits of one lump sum, or the credit card company is going to group those deposits together when they then put it into your bank account. So that means that you want to do the same thing. You want to be able to group your receive payments into your account when you make the deposit into QuickBooks in the same grouping as will be reflected on the bank statement and therefore on the bank feeds if you're using them or on the bank statement when you do the bank reconciliation so that you can match out what we're doing to what's on the bank side with a reconciliation as easily as possible. The bank rec is a huge internal control over not just cash but everything else. So we want to make the bank reconciliation as easy as possible. Now this clearing account might be even more easily seen when we do the sales receipt because when we do sales receipts that's when we have payments that happen at the same point that we do the work at like a check cash register you can imagine selling food or something like that for five dollars a piece and collecting a bunch of five dollar sales if you put all those five dollars sales into the checking account as you make the sale and then deposit them into the bank as one lump sum what you have in our system should tie out in total to what's in the bank, but we won't be able to easily reconcile because they've been entered in our system as one at a time and they're entered into the bank as one lump sum. That actually can be quite problematic. Credit cards again have the same issue because the credit card company might group your, your transactions differently. So you wanna have some kind of system to line that up with the credit card company so that you can make it you know as easy as possible also note that if you if you adjust the sales receipt to make a deposit into the checking account directly then when you look at your increases in the checking accounts you're going to have a sales receipt form as well as deposits that are potentially increasing your checking account so now you have two transaction types that's not a big deal but it can make your sorting a little bit different when you sort it we'll see that shortly However, if you go through undeposited funds, then basically everything in your checking account should that's going to be an increase will either be a deposit or possibly a transfer, which could simplify your sorting a little bit. So we'll take a look at that as we do the data input. So I'm going to go back on over and what I'm going to do then here is I'm going to switch this to the to the what they call it now is a payment to deposit. So this is just another terminology QuickBooks Online is changing their terminology and, and trying to, you know, A-B test, I guess, uh, what the best thing is. If you use the desktop version, it would be called undeposited funds. It's basically the same concept that they're using here, just a different name. I'm gonna select the invoice. So there's the invoice. If I was only receiving a partial payment, I can put the partial payment here and we'd still have an outstanding amount of that invoice. If I clicked on the invoice, we would link on over to the invoice that is now being pulled over. So this payment, what's it going to do? It's going to reduce the accounts receivable. It's going to reduce the sub account for, for the customer related to that accounts receivable. And it's going to record a deposit, not into the checking account yet, but instead to the payments to deposit the clearing account so that we can group them. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I'm going to, I'm going to save it and close it. We'll check it out, save it and close it. Let's go to the balance sheet then and run it. And then if I go, there's nothing in the checking account yet. If I go into the accounts receivable, we see that we have the payment. There's the payment form. Notice here, it's it's has the indication of the transaction type as a payment. That means you know that we've received a payment. These terms can get a little confusing because 
which side of the table are we on with the transaction? We're receiving the payment form here. <laughs> so if I go in, if if I go into it, then it's going to decrease the accounts receivable. There it is because we got the payment, but we didn't put it into the checking account yet. Back to the balance sheet, but instead we put it into this clearing account, the five thousand right here. So there it is. Now notice that this is a basically a cash account, this clearing account. And this is the other kind of confusing thing about it. Same as the undeposited funds account, in essence. You would think it would be up here for financial re reporting purposes under cash, but you don't really want it under the bank accounts or QuickBooks doesn't put it there because the bank accounts specifically have this ability to tie out to the bank feeds. So it acts functionality, function-wise, like it's an other current asset, even though if for financial statement reporting purposes, it would be up here in the cash accounts. So that's a little bit wonky, but you just have to be aware of that. It should be back down to zero as soon as you make the deposit. This is not a, a temporary account. It's a clearing account. I would classify it as, meaning a temporary account is like the income statement accounts that roll out and start over every year. They roll out to the balance sheet to retained earnings. The this is a clearing account that goes back to zero as soon as we make the deposit. It just goes up and then back to zero. The next step that we would expect to happen related to this account, if I go to the first tab, is we're going to group deposits together and then make the deposit. So if I hit the plus button, we would expect the next step. I'm not going to record this just to show it here is to make the deposit. And notice that because we used that that technique, it pulls over this amount which is represented in that payment account, that undeposited funds like account. I keep on forgetting the name. They call it the payments to deposit of 5,000 right here. So, so it gives us this nice little section to help us group these payments together when we make the deposit so we can make the deposit in the lump sum that will be equivalent to what we physically deposit into the bank, making the reconciliation process as easy as possible. So then if I go back to my my hamburger and we go to the sales tab and we go to the customers and I close this back up. Now we did this one for Anderson, was it? So I think we went, if we go into Anderson, there's our payment. So the payment is now there. If I go into the payment, uh, there we have our payment and it's obviously linked to the invoice down below. So there's the invoice. And then if I go into the invoice, it was this invoice now being indicated as paid. So if I go into the invoice, so there is the invoice indicated as paid and it's got this nice link to the payment, which is great. So we have that. I'm going to close this back out. And if I go back into the sales and then the all sales, we can then search by the, the invoices that are open now or the invoices that have been paid. This one has now been paid. If I go to the balance sheet, we've got our accounts receivable here. Also note, I can look at the sub ledger, right click, I'm gonna duplicate, make another report just to see the sub ledger tying out by customer. Reports on the left-hand side, scrolling down to who owes you. Let's do an accounts receivable aging summary report. Close the burger, range and changing, 0101, uh, let's just end date 12 31 2 3 run it so now we've got it broken out by customer the totals at the 23 7 21 50 that should tie out to what's on the balance sheet and just realize that even though we got paid now there's no impact on the income statement why because on an accrual system because we're using invoices and invoices are an accrual thing we recorded the income when we did the work which is usually closer to when we make the invoice. The invoice is the thing that records the income. And then when we receive the payment, we're just moving it from accounts receivable to the, the cash that we're then gonna put into the bank account at some point. All right, let's do another one. I'm gonna go back to the first tab. So I so now I'm gonna imagine we got a payment from Jones from Jones Guitars. So if I got a payment from Jones Guitars, whatever format that is in, I could, could go to the plus button and then say receive payment, just like we did before and say Jones Guitars. And then down below, the invoices will be down below. But instead, this time, 
what you what many people might do is say i'm gonna find jones guitars first and then link so i might go then to the customers sales and you might go to the customers and you're like i got a payment from jones guitars so i could then just clear all the filters down here and look for jones guitars or i might it might be easier to find jones if i go up and say i want open invoices because i know this is an open invoice and there's jones guitars and then go into it and then i'm going to say okay i got a payment and i'm going to say it was this payment these are these invoices that were created by the way when we did the opening balances so you'll note that because we did the opening balances the way we did quickbooks created an invoice like thing for it so that we can now do the easily receive payment which is the next step if i did this with a journal entry it would cause a problem because the receive payment doesn't link to the journal entry as it does with the invoice so, so now I could do the receive payment by just clicking this then, and there's the receive payment and it's already checked off. Jones Guitars is then picked because we selected Jones Guitars. So if I go through this, we're gonna say, there it is. We'll say the 18th, let's keep that. The payment, I'm gonna say it's cash again, just to show the I, the concept of putting it into this payment to, to deposit, which is like undeposited funds instead of directly into the checking account the invoice we selected is already checked off this is going to decrease accounts receivable decrease the sub ledger for the customer and uh increase the cash account but the deposit clearing account undeposited funds like account the payment to deposit as they're calling it here in quickbooks online so let's go ahead and save and close it and then check it out back to the tab to the right the the let's run it to refresh it and then if I go into the accounts receivable, the A to the R has now got these deposits, 7,500. Let's go back. And then we can see that the payments uh, to deposit, undeposited funds like account, the cash kind of on hand that hasn't hit the checking account yet has been increased with the payment form. Going back, that account is supported now by, if I go to the tab to the left, if I was to make a deposit with a deposit form, those two amounts, I could check them off and they add up to the total deposit. So if I was to deposit them at one time, I can check both of them off, grouping the deposits to one account, which is going to show on the bank statement, making it easy to reconcile. So that is going to be that one. And the sub ledger for the receivable should tie out 16.11250. If I run this, by customer 1622150. I think I went dyslexic on that one. 1622.1.1.2. not one one two. And if I go to the tab to the left, then if I hit the arrow, we've got the sales item. And then we've got the customers. And if I was to clear the filters, close the hamburger, that was Jones Guitars. If I go into Jones Guitars, now we've got the payment and we've got the invoice related to it if i go into the invoice it says it's paid and we see that it's clearly indicated in here as paid it's got the link to the payment so everything everything links up and it's great so i'm going to close that out and let's go back to our sales let's do one more the last one for that that invoice that was outstanding from the beginning balances so we could do it again i could i could go into it this way this is going to be smith guitars so I could go in and find Smith Guitars and then say, I want to receive a payment. Or I can I could go to the plus button and I can say that I'm going to have a receive payment and then type in Smith Guitars. Or the other method is we can go to the sales tab. We can go into the, to the invoices here, but I, I tend to go to the all sales and then close this back out and then go into the invoices and then i want to see the open invoices now so there's our open invoices if you were in the business view by the way just remember that that the sales transactions in a little bit different location it's under the bookkeeping remember and then transactions and then you've got your your sales transactions on the right for that one okay so then so let's go into it here and then say that we've got the transaction and we want to be picking up this one, the opening balance one. So I'm going to say receive payment from here, receive payment. 
and it'll create the, the report once again, just like we saw before. So let's just do the same thing here. So we'll keep the same date payment. I'm just going to say cash again, just for the purposes of, of thinking of it, increasing the payment to deposit, even though it's a large dollar amount, this is going to do the same thing. Let's say what it's going to do. It's a receive payment. That means it's going to decrease accounts receivable. And then it's going to decrease the sub account for the customer. The other side's going to go into some kind of cash account, not the checking account yet, because we told it to go to the payment to deposit, which is like undeposited funds, the clearing account so that we can group that money together in the same format that it's going to be physically deposited into our checking account. Let's save it and close it. Check it out one more time. Tab it to the right. Let's run it to refresh it. We've got the A to the R going into the AR. And so there's these three. Smith is the last one. If I go into that one, then of course, there's our form. Closing it back out, scrolling up. The other side is going to go to the payment to deposit opening that up there it is in there we've got these three payments so if we deposit them at one time into the checking account it's going to be deposited at twenty thousand five hundred. if i was to have made these individually put into the checking account i would see a payment form instead of a deposit form for three separate amounts and that might make it a little bit more difficult to reconcile to the bank account if I'm depositing it physically into the bank account as one line item. If I go to the tab to the left and hit the plus button and hit the bank deposit, it's got this nice system within QuickBooks that anything in undeposited funds adding up to that 20,500 has been put in here. So the payments and the sales receipts will kind of show up in here so that we can easily click them off and group them in that way so that they, so we can deposit them properly hopefully and make it easy to reconcile so closing that back out there are those and then the accounts receivable sub ledger if i run that is now at uh, 8,011,250. that's what should be tying out to this eight thousand two two one fifty eight thousand two two one fifty. that's what i meant and then let's go to the first tab in this tab now if i look at the open invoices these are the two remaining open if we look at the paid items this is what have been paid and of course we can track this in the sales side you can also look at, at similar information in the invoices here in the invoices tab and do similar processes within here and then we go into the customers and if i was to look at all the customers i can go down to smith and say okay smith if, if they were to contact me and talk to and i'm communicating with them i could say okay yeah the invoice has been paid if i go into that invoice i can see that it's been paid it has a link to the payment that's been made everything lines up very nicely okay let's open up the trial balance just to see where we stand i'm just going to do it in this tab hit the hit the uh hamburgie reports and we're going to say this is the trial balance the trustee t to the b and change the range from 010123 to 123. run it to refresh it close the boogie hold down control scroll up this is where we're standing these are our two legs the left leg we call debit leg and the right leg we call the credit leg and then you can see if uh if you line up to what we have if you don't try to change the range if there's a difference when you change the range then when you expand the range drill down on the data and see if it's a date issue that you can then change in the source document which is good to do in a practice problem but you be careful doing that in practice and then we'll we'll take a look at the transaction detail reports at the end of entering the first month of data input to double check our numbers at that time too